This is the first of several videos we want to uh, make about constructing a Civil War dress. Um, and this being the first in the series, I thought we would talk a little bit about some of the basics of design elements, including fabric selection, the overall look you want to go for, um, and so forth. There are two excellent books uh, that I recommend anyone check out. The first is Victorian Costumes for Ladies, and it's this one here, um, which has excellent photographs uh, by Linda Stenick. And it covers the eras 1860 to 1900. And since we're looking at the Civil War era, we'll flip to some images here to just have folks keep a few things in mind. And of course, there's many other wonderful um, considerations for this era of uh, fashion. I think the first thing that many people find surprising is compared to the Hollywood image, most Civil War dresses are pretty basic in style. If you look here, for example, you're talking either a solid fabric, not that much trim, okay, and so these would be more examples of more conservative uh, Civil War uh, type of attire. Whenever you do see trim, as in this photo here, it's probably hard to see with the camera, but it's typically done with the same fabric as the dress itself. That's known as self-trim. And with silks, that can be a very effective way to utilize um, decoration. Okay. There were also prints, though. This picture right here uh, is actually a polka dot type print. But again, notice that other than variations in sleeve style and perhaps trim, there's just not a whole lot uh, excess. You know, so the Hollywood version is definitely off base, but we're not really surprised at that. Some prints could be uh, very uh, big and bold, as in this one here. And typically the larger prints and the bolder prints were for more affluent uh, women because they could afford to have extra fabric needed, like one-way designs and things like that. Okay, But again, notice that any of the trim is also accessorized. So for example, this neck bow, undersleeves, uh, collars and cuffs and so on are all elements you can make separately and add to any dress. So it does not have to be extremely fancy as we're looking through here. Okay, So this gives you at least some basic visuals as to Civil War attire and that mostly, again, aside from a few basic sleeve styles, the bodice is roughly the same. It's very fitted. Even when you see a gathered bodice like this woman here, it is on a foundation that is actually um, fitted. Okay, so that's important to consider. So that's some examples of the era in terms of the clothing silhouette. Another excellent book is Textile Designs. Uh, by Susan Meller and Juiced Efflers. This book is a veritable treasure trove of different fabric styles from early 1800s through today, and it's often organized by motif. But I thought what I would do would be to show some examples of what we want to go for in terms of Civil War era fabric. A lot of times in reenacting, you'll see people select fabric um, that is like this type of, of style. It's a big floral and so forth. And this is actually uh, late 1800s. So it wouldn't really be appropriate for Civil War. However, this one here is 1870, 1880. It's just after the war. So if you're doing bustle era, this would be quite appropriate. Some of the earlier fabrics had brighter, more contrasty colors. This is from 1840, for example. And this one is from 1820. Okay, So this idea that fabrics were very drab just because they're from the 1800s is not really the case. But in terms of Civil War era, specifically, most of the kinds of prints that we're dealing with, and I'm just kind of flipping through some of these so you can see the scope of what this book covers, uh, typically have small scale prints. Some of, the, some of them are geometric and some of them are actually um, vibrant, but a lot of them have more muted kinds of tones. Uh, and so you'll recognize some of the color ways and color schemes and tones that, that we'll be showing you. Okay. So this is just some of the things we're flipping through here. Now here's an example of the matters. Matter is a type of dye coming from the matter plant which resulted in a nice muted reddish-brown color. 
If you look at any of these, these are all appropriate for Civil War. This is actually an 1861 print. It looks like something from the 1970s. You know, here's another example here. So notice that the scales are relatively small, but very vibrant, uh, even within the brown color scheme. And certainly browns weren't the only limits here. This print here would be really good for like a wrapper, like a house coat that women would wear. Here's another example from 1850. So these are all appropriate for Civil War. And if you're really curious, you got to check out this book. By contrast, these here are actually from the early 1800s. And so this would be more for the um, Jane Austen era that we think of, the really beautiful lawn or gauze dresses that you would see. However, for some impressions, they might be appropriate depending on if you're an older woman, for example, or you're doing an impression of someone remodeling a dress. Keep in mind, dresses were remodeled quite regularly during uh, this era. Here are some more matters. These are actually from Civil War and just post. You would be shocked. These look like, again, something from the 1940s or 1970s, but they are indeed appropriate fabrics to use. And some of these become hard to date, they, a lot of the existing patterns we have are from sample books that salesmen would, would take as they go around to different shops. Okay, so that's just some examples through the books that we have uh, to recommend. Now in terms of basic fabrics that you'll want to have on hand um, for any Civil War dress, the first is 100% cotton in a very um, mid-range tan, like a light, light cocoa brown, or tan or beige will work fine. You want 100% cotton and you want it to be pre-washed. This is going to be used for your linings of your dress and it's also used for the hem guard. And the hem guard is what protects the bottom of your hoop skirt uh, or work dress, uh, whether or not you're wearing a hoop. People were very smart back then. Instead of hemming the fabric itself, they added this hem guard. So when it wore out, you take off the uh, less expensive tan cotton, put on another hem guard. And we'll go through how to do that in future videos. But you just want to purchase 100% cotton, quilters, Kona cotton's another name for it. Uh, a very high quality, it pre-washes wonderfully. Tumble dry high heat and press it. And, and of course you can tell here this hasn't been pressed perfectly, but it's enough so when I cut it out there won't be too many folds to contend with. Another thing you'll want to have in terms of materials is um, a very thin cord. This is just a cotton string. This is used for making piping and we'll talk about making piping in future videos. But these two items will go with any dress uh, as well as some of the other uh, materials for the dress we're going to make specifically in future videos will uh, have a complete materials list. But in general you want to try to make your own decorations, your own piping that looks the most authentic. Okay. And then finally, uh, Audrey, our cat, is uh, lovingly modeling uh, three potential fabric choices that will all work well for a basic Civil War women's work dress. Uh, the first one I've selected is a nice um, kind of a mid-range brown. It's hard to zoom in here. <laughs> and it has an aqua accent and a little floral. So it's a nice combination of a geometric with a floral element, which is very Victorian and very much in the 1860s spirit. This is again 100% cotton. All three of these fabrics have been pre-washed and pressed, so they're good to go as soon as we pick out our pattern and decide what to cut out. Another possibility that would work great for a Civil War work dress or any kind of a basic day dress is this wonderful kind of a light forest green with a really beautiful uh, kind of magenta with fade outs in a rose uh, pattern with a little bit of brown and olive mixed in. And so you have again, the, notice the geometric effect, but you also at the same time have the floral. So this is not the same as the cutesy, you know, florals that you often see in the, uh, in the main fabric shops nowadays, which are fine for other projects, but for a Civil War, you want to have that kind of older looking fabric, more muted, but still vibrant and lively with prints. And then the third possibility that will eventually be in a dress uh, that we make is this wonderful oak leaf and acorn motif. It's got a nice kind of a light aqua background, but it's also muted with a beautiful, almost an eggplant 